Hello there my beloved Batties and welcome to another episode of Truth Behind the Tale, the series where I take a look at some of our most famous fairy tales and delve into their real world historical and cultural origins. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Frog Prince. I'm very green as you can see for this episode, I wanted to try and make myself look as frog-like as possible. <laughs> <laughs> the Frog Prince holds the distinction of being the traditional first story in the Brothers Grimm collection. And while their version is the best known version, there's evidence to suggest that part of it may extend back to at least Roman times. In Petronius's Satyricon, a Latin work of fiction from the late 1st century AD, a character remarks that the man who was once a frog is now a king. This may not have been a literal transformation, however, because some scholars have argued that it was a scornful reference to the Emperor Nero, who was often mockingly compared to a frog. From the potential Roman origin to modern day, there have also been several variations of the tale, or similar ones which can be grouped into the same classification. These include the Toad Bridegroom and A Frog for a Husband, which are both from Korea, and a Russian version in which the male and female roles are reversed, with the frog becoming a female sorceress. There are also a number of tales from Scotland which tend to feature a well, such as the tale of the queen who sought a drink from a certain well, and the well at the world's end. The first tale can be traced back to 1548 in the West Highlands and tells of an ill queen who sends her three daughters to a well to gather some healing water. They're all approached by an ugly creature referred to as a Loscan, which could be a frog or a toad. The Loscan asks each girl to marry him and in return he will grant them access to the water. The first two daughters refused, but the youngest agreed, and after taking water to heal her mother, the lost gang came to her and told her to remember her promise. He told her to cut off his head with a rusty sword, and when she did, he transformed into a handsome prince. The Well of the World's End, recorded in the Scottish Lowlands, is the story of a girl whose stepmother abuses her and wishes to be rid of her. She's given a sieve and ordered not to return home until she's filled it with water from the well of the world's end. At the well, she's approached by a frog who offers to help her, on the condition that she does everything he asks for one night. The girl agrees, and the frog seals up the holes in the sieve with moss and clay, allowing her to take the water back home. Her stepmother is furious at her return, but insists that the girl keep her promise to the frog. After asking for supper and then to sleep in the bed with her, the frog asks her to chop off its head. As in the other tale, he then transforms into a prince. Both of these versions show links to the original Brothers Grimm tale as it was first recorded. The princess didn't break the frog's spell by kissing him, but instead by throwing him against the wall in disgust. In other early versions, the curse was broken by the frog spending a night on the princess's pillow, similar to the Well of the World's End. More variations of the tale have sprung up over the years, with many adaptations, spin-offs, satires, and even musicals appearing since the time of the Brothers Grimm. It's also given rise to the refrain, you have to kiss a lot of frogs before you find your prince. But even if you're not a hopeless romantic, please don't go cutting off their heads or flinging them against walls. Thank you for joining me for this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a big thumbs up if you did. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a single episode. The next episode of Truth Behind the Tale will be coming on the last Tuesday of next month. Thank you for watching, have a nice day, and I'll see you all again very soon in another video. Bye!